Two roads diverge, yet I all would, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood. I peered down one as far as I could. And I'm going to take you down two roads, because we are about to engage in the biggest war of our society. The next 20 years, we're going to find a tremendous disconnect between the forces of the same and the forces of the future. Ned Ludd was a weaver. He was a good weaver. And he had a wife and three children, a little cottage in Leicester, England. And he went to work one day and he got fired. That night, they decided they were going to go and break the automated looms that had put them out of business, out of work, and started the phrase Luddism, Luddites, those people who hated the advance of technology. Little did he know, he could have gone across town. They were hiring to build the steam engines that were going to change transportation in the world and make England an industrial power throughout the 19th and 20th century. The steam engines were an important part. But I'm going to tell you another story. Evie lives in Eden. She got up one morning from her oceanfront condo, which she just bought for $50,000 and decided to walk to work. And as she walked to work, there were birds chirping, no traffic sounds. She could hear a little bit of the lapping of the waves against the shore. People sitting, drinking coffee on tables out on the lawn, on the path. And she was happy. She was going to her next new job. She had been, she had had several interesting and very, very capable jobs, but she decided to change the path. She thought she was going to become a designer. She was a genetic engineer. She just had her 84th birthday. She lived in this wonderful place because things had gotten cheaper and more accessible. She'd become slender and athletic. She didn't have the noise and the congestion. Life was good. She lived almost an idyllic life. One of the things was an auto drive car, self-driving cars. Right now, every major automobile company has a self-driving car. Mercedes has somewhat somewhere around 20 million miles on a self-driving car, hands-free. Google, five to 10 million. Ford has it. And it looks really like a fascinating technology, but it will destroy 15 million current jobs. Wow. And you say, 15 million? Is, mine, is one of mine up there? Mass transit worker, car washer? Ticket taker, traffic cop, gone. You say, whoa, that's going to be a big disruption. 15 million jobs gone? But then we can take a look at this, motor vehicle deaths, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War. If you add all those up, self-driving cars win by a quarter of a million. But let's keep going. Just some examples here. Robots everywhere. Not these kind. These kind. And what happens? When you extract labor out of manufacturing and various other things, the world changes. It's really important because things get cheaper. Now, when things are cheaper, is it different? do you need to make more money if you're, the money you have can buy more stuff? I don't know. I think it's either one. But manufacturing goods, prices go down. 
Eight million jobs lost. But let's go into farming, aquaculture. What about this one? You say, what does that got to do with farming? Well, this guy, believe it or not, is a cowboy. He's raising beef. But you can grow beef protein in a factory, in a chemical factory. No hormones, no antibiotics, no waste. No bone, no hair, no hoofs, nothing. None of that nasty stuff. Just good, pure beef. It's not as romantic as a cowboy, but it'll... <laughs> but anyway, let's go one more step. Medical diagnostics and treatments. More and more of what we'll be doing will be tested, automated, real turn, genetically driven drugs, Boom, seven million jobs, gone. Let's go to education. Education, we all know that we're gonna to have to get better education. But education is gonna get so much more efficient. I've got an educational software company right now that can teach 10 times faster than classroom and more fun. So all of a sudden you say, whoo, what's gonna happen there? Boom, six million jobs, gone. Now let's just add them all up for a minute. 50 million jobs lost. Oh my dear, oh dear, what am I going to do? Well, Schumpner has talked about the fact that fundamentally, economic progress in capitalist society means turmoil. Are we ready for the turmoil? That's where the, job, the, the war is going to be. But it's happened before. I talked about Ned Ludd. But you remember this? How much would it cost us to make a telephone call if we had, a, had, a, had a, uh, an operator on the other end? I know what that is. This is me when I was 11 years old. <laughs> now, I can tell you for sure that I had the neatest, coolest radio equipment around. If you were a nerd in the 50s, you were a ham radio operator. But in the corner behind my head is a dial telephone. That was the first dial phone that we had in our house. Before that, it was a party line. The other goods next door were ring one, we were ring two, and Mrs. Jensen was ring three. If somebody else was on the phone, you had to say, can I make a call? Mrs. Jensen, because she liked to talk a lot. <laughs> but what was worse, she liked to listen a lot. <laughs> This way is better. I, I want you to believe that. But let's talk about one more step. Bits or atoms. When we're talking about jobs, you have to understand that as societies get richer, we spend more money on bits. Bits are cool. You say, what do you mean bits? I don't buy bits. You actually do. Let's think about a pair of jeans. You can buy a pair of jeans from any design for about eight bucks in China. Maybe six at the best. But yet when I go out and I buy a pair of jeans, I pay 70 or 80 bucks. When my wife goes out, she spends about 100 and 150. <laughs> um, so the question is, what part of the economic stream do you want? Do you want the atoms, eight bucks? You want the bits, 80 bucks, 100 bucks. These are better jobs. The bits jobs are better jobs than the atoms job. Robots take away the atoms jobs. Humans will always be available to do the bits jobs. When you have a self-driving car, it can be small, and it can be very easily put underground. Say that we limit the size of the car to two meters by high. You can drop a tunnel, two meters, berm it over, and all of a sudden, instead of every asphalt street, you now have a park, and the traffic is below it. No noise, no pollution, no congestion. That's a better life. You say, riding in a car, Underground, that can't be very much fun. I said, wait, 
you don't have to see out anymore. So all the windows can be screens. And so now, as a software designer, I can give you what it looks like to drive down the street in 2000, 1900, 2050, or down a street where there's a bank robbery going on. We can have some real fun with that. <laughs> or we can make it look like, we're going to have enough cameras all over the place that we can composite it so that it looks like you're just a hovercraft going down the middle of the park. That's so much cooler than just going down and being stuck in traffic. Now your, your cities are going to start looking like this, or this, or this. I want to live in a garden city. Quiet, no congestion. Do you ever stop to think how ugly a street with a lot of parked cars is? It's really ugly. Let's just get rid of it. But more than that, this is what Wilshire Boulevard will look like. Because an auto drive car can go 120 miles an hour safely under one of the tunnels. So I can basically go to downtown with no traffic jams in about five minutes. Going downtown to, lot, to downtown LA in five minutes, I want to do that. That gardening will take at least nine million jobs and maybe 12, maybe 15. But let's go to the Hyperloop for a minute. If you can go, if you can get rid of the air in a tube and move a train through it, you can exceed the speed of sound. All of a sudden, you've got transportation system domestically that gives you these kinds of numbers, or better. I want to go really fast. I want to get there in a, in a big hurry, and it'll get very cheap. This is the new interstate highway system of the future. People talk about the high-speed rail, old technology. You got to exceed the speed of sound. Then all of a sudden, it's so much better than air travel. It's cheaper. It's center of city to center city. You'll probably still have some kind of homeland security nightmare, but you know, <laughs> you have to do what you have to do. But anyway. Aquaculture. Islands can be manufactured. People like beachfront property. But more than that, today, most of the oceans are actually deserts. There's very little sea life in the middle of the ocean. But with a little bit of fertilizer from your, from your island, you can actually start algae growing, krill then eating the algae, shrimp now eating the krill. You've got an aquaculture and an ecosystem and a place to live. And the island can go north when it's summer and south when it's winter. That would be cool. I want to live there. Efficient education. You're going to have a whole bunch of people in retraining because the acceleration of the jobs are going to be so quick that time in grade is going to be less than 10 years per employee. And so we will figure out ways to retrain in about six months of downtime, maybe three months for certain jobs. And so you'll be in a job, in retraining, in a job, in retraining, in a job. It'll be fun. You'll learn new stuff, learn new tricks, bring experience from your old job into your new. Education will be really cool. But the most important thing that we're going to keep is enthusiasm and passion. I have found that I always hire for enthusiasm and passion. When I do that, I never fail. If they're unqualified, but they have enthusiasm and passion, hire them. And the reason is, is about half the people in the world are dead from the neck up. <laughs> and when you hire somebody that's dead, it's not a good deal. <laughs> so always hire the live person 
and the more alive they are, the better the deal is. Because you can train them in anything. Because people that love life, have passion about it, and cre they're, they're the people that are going to make the future happen. We can deliver and live in the future. And it's going to happen very fast. Auto drive cars are going to be starting to hit the road next year, maybe the year after. In some parts of the country, in the world, they will take off like wildfire. The reason is that your insurance costs will drop tremendously. Your energy, your, your fuel efficiency will increase, and the, the congestion goes to almost zero. Because an auto drive car situation, they go nose to tail. We're going to live in the future. I want you to know Edie also had a sister. I didn't tell you about her, but she lived in the land of blood. And in 25 years, she went back to see her sister, who lived in, in the nation of blood. And they had taken the path of stopping the future whenever they could. They didn't call it stopping the future. They said, we are going to protect jobs. This new technology needs another 20 years of testing before it's authorized to be safe. Have you ever stopped to think about what an auto drive truck means to the Teamsters? They're not going to go away without a little kicking and screaming. So what are we going to do? We can fight it or we can join it. Because Edie's sister lives in a land in which it takes $50 to get across town in a taxi. Edie gets free transportation as part of her Amazon Prime account. <laughs> now, she knows, she knows that there's packages in the, in the cab with her, but she doesn't care. They're in a different compartment. And so we can do the future with cheaper goods, faster transportation, more vacations, better health care, efficient education, and shorter work hours. I want that. And we can get it. All we have to do is have the desire to do it. It's the failure to believe that is the problem. We can solve this. And we need everyone to build the society of the future. Thank you.